Hi, I have some spare time, so uh, here is another clip with tips and tricks with FastLED library. In this clip, I'm going to explain how to control groups of LEDs, simple and efficient, plus a few cool tricks with the function that I'm using to achieve that. In the past, I was using a for loop to access groups of LEDs. Uh, it's like a classical method for accessing groups but it's not that efficient because a for loop it's a blocking operation and it's adding delay when you have a fast animation and a large number of LEDs. When I was working at the stairway controller project I wasn't able to do a simple effect using the for loop method so I've started searching for a simpler method. After a few hours searching on Google I decided to open the manual because I didn't find anything useful online. And after almost 30 minutes in the manual, I found the perfect function to achieve what I want and a few things more. So the function is called fill gradient and like the name suggests, it's for making gradient colors on the strip. Let's see the code we'll be working with and I will explain more when we get to it. So like before, we include the fast LED library. We define the LED types that we will be working with. We define the total number of LED strips in our case 1, we define the total number of LEDs per strip, in our case 50, we start the instance for the strips, one strip and 50 LEDs per strip, we define the inputs, uh, we will have four buttons and two potentiometers, we define the variables for holding real-time data from those inputs, and here we have some variables that we'll be using for a signal because I've changed the signal function to use the fill gradient function. In voice setup, we define the serial begin for debugging purposes. We set the, um, the buttons and the potentiometers as inputs. We define the output pin for the LED strip, in our case 12, for LED strip 0 with the total number of LEDs per strip, in our case 50. Because some LED strips are full white when you turn them on, we fill solid with black, LED strip 0, in our case, and then we send the command to the LED strip. Now, in void loop, we first read the buttons and the potentiometers, then, if the first button is pressed, we execute the for loop. The for loop looks like this. We create an integer, the pixel. We start the pixel from the fourth LED. This is the start of the group. Then every pass, the pixel will increment with one. That's why we have plus plus here. And while the pixel is smaller than 34, in our case, the end group, we execute this code and we turn pixel by pixel on. And now for the second button, if the second button is pressed, then we use the fill gradient function. The fill gradient takes five parameters. First parameter will be the LED strip. The second parameter will be the start of the group, in our case, the 14 LED. The third parameter will be the start color of the group. The fourth parameter will be the end group, in our case 44, LED 44, and the fifth parameter will be the end color of the group. Now for the third button, if the third button is pressed, we will use the values from the potentiometers and we will map those values to the maximum, to the total number of LEDs per strip, and because Arduinos have 10-bit analog input, they will generate a number from 0 to 123 and we will map that value to 0 from 0 to the total number of LEDs for both potentiometers because we will use those values to change the start position of the group and the end position of the group on the fly. And now for the last button we have the signal. Because I want to run the signal multiple times with one impulse I've made a signal state variable to keep track of how many times the signal had run. Because the signal is an animation, we need to use the for loop. And we define an integer, the end of the group, and every pass we increment with one. And while the end of the group is smaller 
then the total number of LEDs, we execute this code. We use the fill gradient function and we set the end of the group every pass. After that, we set the current time and the previous time with the millis function. And while the previous time plus the delay we want for the LEDs turning on is greater than the current time, then we send the commands to the LEDs and keep track of the current time. The big advantage to do the delay in this way is that in the while loop you can also read and react to the inputs. After that we use the same method to add a delay to let the signal on for a time, in this case delay signal to off. After that we turn off the signal with field solid black, we keep the signal off for the same amount of time we increment the signal state every pass and after that if the signal state uh, is equal with the signal number of animation that we want we set the signal state to zero. Now to be able to turn off the LEDs after I release the buttons we have this if statement. If button 1 is released and button 2 is released and button 4 is released and also signal state is equal to 0 except button 3 you will see you will see why later we execute this code and this is fading to black 10 times per second the LED strip 0 with the total number of LEDs and after that we send the commands to the LEDs now let's see it in action so, this is our setup, and for the first button we have a group of red LEDs. For the second button we have a group of green LEDs. For the third button we have a group of uh, blue LEDs. And for the fourth button we have the signal. Keep in mind that the order um, in which you have the groups in the, in the code counts. Here is the first group, the second group, and the third group. The last group in the code will always dominate. Now, at the third button, through the potentiometer, by the way, these are 5k potentiometer, we can change the end group and the start of the group. This is extremely good because now we can use all kinds of sensors, including um, audio inputs, to change the start or the end of the group. The other great thing about this function, field gradient, is that you can change the start color and the end color of the group. So, let's say we have, we start with red color and end with blue color. Let's upload the code and see how it looks like. Here we have the start of the group. It starts with red and the end of the group ends with blue. And now, for an even cool uh, thing, let's hook up a microphone. Now, we can change the end of the group. Let's set the start at zero. The end doesn't count. And when we make noise, we are changing the end of the group, but because this is a crappy microphone, we have a lot of noise. That's why these LEDs are staying on. And the crappy sensibility. So, let's fix that. We need a 10K pull-down resistor to get rid of the noise. 
but we also decreased the sensibility. But we can fix that in the code. Let's see what is the max value of the signal. before we are mapping the values and we have around 141 let's say 150 so now, let's constrain the value of the potentiometer from 0 to 115. Let's change the mapping also. And now, let's upload the code. Now our sensibility has increased. Test, test, one, two, three. Now let's make the third button always on and test it with some music. Now, to make it even better, we can increase the number of times that we fade to black to 50. Let's re-upload the code. And let's test it again with the music. Well, that's all for this clip. Hope you learned something new. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks.